definitely is one of those days. Would you guys not agree? It's, it's, it's a day that ends in Y. Does that count? Sort of. And for some strange, odd reason, your face is like really low. That. There you go. Now I can see you on the screen. So can everybody else. Uh, Hi. But now, now I've got to lean back all the way over here. Shall, shall I zoom my camera in? I, I don't well, know. Let's scare, scare away the viewers. It, it might. For some reason, <laughs> you being centered on your camera is not like the rest of us being centered on the camera. Mm -hmm. You need to be a little more. And it may have just been the way I, I've structured things, this particular thing. So lower your camera just a tiny bit. Yay. Now we can see you. But yes. There we go. Hello, everybody. Go ahead. And there was much hellowing and, and silence from the Gazimov. Yes, yes. Gazimov has had a week. A whole week in one day. That's quite impressive. It's a technical term to, to say, basically, I have... Uh, I'm glad to be back home for once. <laughs> Oh, poor Miz. In case you can't tell everybody, Miz is just a tiny, itty bitty little, wee little, little, little tiny bit sick. Something like that. But yes. Yes, I'm afraid I have a throat, a head, and a cold, and blurgle. So if I cough at you, well, the last thing I saw is medical evidence means you don't actually catch anything over the interwebs. At least that's what they tell me. So they say. But yes, welcome to Cosmetronic, episode 25, Hardcore Wildstar. We have a lot to cover. Yes, we are aware of the fact that Wildstar is currently live at the same time streaming some stuff. Um, but hey, you know, we're not going to change our schedule. We're still going to do what we do. And worse comes to worse. If you want to keep watching that, that's cool. You we're going to be on YouTube. So it's not the end of the world. So hello to everybody and greetings, Harsi. Hello, Robots Hate Me. Hello, Dracomonger. Hello, Suliko. Hello to everybody. So, pseudo yeah. topics, we have them. Well, we can't do anything without doing the, and only because this was requested am I doing this again. So, you know, bear oh, with me. I am yeah. very, very sorry, Gazzy. But we're now going to bring to you Gazamoff news with the start of boom, chick, 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 boom, chick, 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 pioing, 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 boom, chick, 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 pioing, chick, 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 pioing, 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 pioing. The Lopzilla brings to you. Gazimov news. Okay, so this week in Wildstar, it's been pretty hectic. Uh, the biggest piece of news that uh, has come out so far this week is the Reddit Ask Me Anything from the Raids and Groups team. But let's be honest, it was mainly the Raids team answering questions because that's not really the piece that we've had very much. Um, of a blah blah blah. I've forgotten the ability to form Herbal, sentences. Herbal, this is terrible. Herbal, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yes, Herbal, blah, blah, blah. You have completely uh, been so, snowed under by the awesome Lopzilla entry or intro. See, I'm not even talking. Much. Do you know, no, no, no. We, Cosmetronic, we, I, 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 we don't I'm, speak I'm English today. I'm going to introduce English for the benefit of our English speaking yeah. viewers. No, none of us can speak. I uh, have a news article. It's now going to be delivered in English, or maybe should, should I call it pseudo English? That's not fair. I think that's a bit rich. I think that's a bit rich. Anyway, getting back to it. So raiding is the one aspect of Wildstar that we've heard the least about. We've seen some pretty live streams. And if you've been following Zybak's Twitch TV channel, then uh, you'll probably have seen him uh, doing genetic archives. But we've not really dug deeply into it. And that changed with the release of the um, raids dev speak last week, I think it was. And now we've had a raid ask me anything earlier on this week, which is pretty fantastic because it had Brett Schneider, the otherwise known as CRB Time Travel, who is the Dungeons and Raids lead, answering a shed load of questions. If you're not familiar with the term shed load, it is a British um, <laughs> colloquialism, which basically means a awful lot. Boatload would be a good one. Boatload would be another good one, yes. Uh, are we, I'm not sure if we're talking about like little schooner or if we're talking about something big. Yes. That really depends on the size of the shed. Yes. We're talking boats. I'm on a boat. But anyway, go ahead. So there are an awful lot of uh, radiant um, answers out there. And if you go and actually have a look at the Wildstar uh, raids and design team, ask me anything, 
you'll find that there's a really nice, helpful summary at the start of it where you can see all the questions and all the answers really, really clearly laid out. A couple of key things. Um, they're designing for both fun and challenge. So he mentioned that the you had one difficulty where you're trying to uh, do challenging encounters, but they weren't particularly fun, they were frustrating, they were a chore. Or you had encounters that were entertaining, but they were achieved. You could just stroll through them like anything. And I've just seen my dinner's just arrived, which is why I'm doing hand signals. <laughs> so yes. Apparently that gesture means curry. <laughs> yeah. I'd just like to pass it out for the benefit of anyone else. Yes, this is the international mime for curry. <laughs> I thought I thought that hand signal meant cheese, but okay. <laughs> uh. So, I would strongly recommend if you are interested in Wild Stars Raiding Scene, which is designed to be a hardcore experience, challenging, difficult, but also highly entertaining. Then check out the. Raids dev speak, but also really chew through that uh, AMA on Reddit because there's an awful lot of information on that. I would seriously encourage you to take a closer look. Absolutely. I mean, I think what really blew my brains out about the ask me anything for them is a lot of people, when given the opportunity to ask questions, will ask things that have absolutely nothing to do at all with what the team is responsible for but sometimes some gems come out the thing that really stuck out to me where there are people from australia people from down under who are really worried about ping latency especially in an action mmo and one of the things that was pointed out by crb gaffer was the fact that they have actually had some people from the eu connecting to the dallas server who actually cleared genetic archive and they did it with what could be considered a relative latency or ping because there's that's two different things um from eu to dallas it's the kind of thing you can expect from australia or some of the other oceanic locations to an american server so the fact that they were able to do it and to clear it explains that a lot of people who were panicking about having that low latency, that low ping, et cetera, don't really need to panic anymore because obviously they're sort of set up to handle it. Now, one could argue they didn't have 95 million people trying to do genetic archives all at one time. One could argue that, but in all that's honesty, a lot of eggs exploding right there. That that is a lot of eggs exploding, and the, <laughs> that was the other thing. Someone said, "What is the most difficult boss encounter you've designed so far?" And they said it wasn't a boss; it was the eggs. And yes. my head just yes. went, oh, "The eggs." So there is, this, so there are these things called uh, strain eggs. So if you're not familiar with the strain, the strain is something that you start discovering. This is spoiler alert. Um, the strain of something that you discover later on in your exploration within Wildstar. And I will leave it at that for the law fiends out there who really want to try and discover this story when they get uh, when they start playing the game and get really into it. But there's these eggs. If you go near the egg, they explode, apparently, from what uh, time travel is saying. Well, well they a, say a, you generate a, an aura around you is the way they yeah. explained it, is you have yeah. this aura so, that can trigger these eggs and then they disorient. Yes, so not only do they explode, they apply a stacking debuff, and they disorient you, so your WASD keys are all screwed up. So the chances are if you hit one egg, and the debuff is uh, double damage, which stacks, so you, you hit one egg, you take damage. You hit further eggs, you take more damage, you continue to be disoriented, and you're basically walking around, you can't work out which way to go, and then you die. And um, let's not forget, you're actually bom being bombarded with fire from above at this point in time as well. Mm. And there are more eggs respawning left, right, and center. And it's, um, interesting. I, I just have to point out to you, by the way, Gazi, you are still a little quiet for some people, so, um, yeah. Yeah, I can't do anything further about it, unfortunately. No worries. I will state someone has asked higher. if uh, Genetic Archives has been cleared and it was stated by Gaffer that there was a European guild that connected to the Dallas servers to do the testing that have fully cleared Genetic Archives. So I would assume then that the answer is, yeah, there has been someone I'm, who I'm, has done it. I'm, I'm going to believe that's probably less the last boss as that's all that's been available. Mm -hmm. But yes. So, but so, raiding. Big topic, tons that I'd like to dive into there. 
but there's, there's probably been a little bit of other news that's affected the wild star community in the last week I don't yeah. know. Should we, should we cut could, other things and come back? Could, could, could I could I take a guess as to what you could possibly, in some way, shape, or form, maybe sort of be referring to? I don't know. Can you name anything, Gazzy? Could you name something I that can... could possibly have anything to do with this past week in Wildstar? I could definitely name one certain incident that uh, that cropped up recently. You so, could name something. I could definitely name something. And if you had could already... you? you? You were doing well. Yeah. Um, I, I managed to name something. Just one thing, though. One thing. So um, if you hadn't guessed, we're talking about Name Reservation. Now, Name Reservation went live earlier on this week. I think it was on the Wednesday, the 8th. Um, and it... Tuesday. Went... It was... It Tuesday. It okay. was supposed to be Tuesday. Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Yeah. Hence okay. forever, I think, known as wrong term space cowboy. Yes, exactly. This is the return of the space cowboy. Interplanetary, good folks there. Name the album. Anyway, so um, we, I was trying to do my name reservation on Tuesday, and it was a bit of a nightmare. They brought the system up, and then they, well, they tried to bring it up, and it didn't come up, and then they delayed it, and then they brought it up two hours later and it didn't work for a lot of people and there were issues and there were the system is designed is down for scheduled maintenance messages coming up and all these kinds of difficulties so long story short it didn't go without a hitch there were a lot of issues they are carbine have said that they are investigating what went on producing a report from it and that's um Cougar, who is their head ops guy, has said that he has written a report. It's now being passed to the, inter the localization team so they can translate yep. it into Span uh, no, German and French. And then it will be put up on the website Monday. So we'll actually be able to look at what actually went on, what the problems yep. were, uh, and how the issues came up. What they are we, doing we do, is they we do know a little bit as well. Um, can I just dive into the issues before we come to where they are? I was just going to say they are giving okay. us five boom boxes each for everyone who pre-ordered uh, as a way of an apology to say, look, we kind of goofed up on this one. But uh, yes. Yeah. And so the, the last thing I was going to say before I let you speak, Miss, but because, you know, I like to interrupt you entirely in this, I have to state unequivocally the fact that they're going to be bringing us a report a post-mortem of an event that was community resounding in its effects is unprecedented in some cases and i'm looking forward to it to see just how deep the post-mortem goes because you know we've seen some tech stuff from people before like when they went into our the server architectures and what it really takes to run an mmo server with daemons and things like that i'll be curious to see just how in-depth this post-mortem gets but go ahead Ms. You are now allowed to speak. Okay. I'm allowed to speak. Um, so I'll just give a little bit of a summary of what we know at the moment, because I sat up uh, pretty much watching events unfold live for a number of hours. You know, the things you have to do in the name of duty and all this stuff. Uh, that and the fact that I was being a serial insomniac, so it wasn't exactly a problem at the time. Um, and there's a few things we do know, but there's a lot of misconceptions floating around in the various threads. But there's a couple of posts by uh, the gaffer on Reddit talking about what's happened. And there were updates as the night went on. So the core issue that we believe currently things to be related to um, is the management of SSO or single sign-on sessions, i.e. getting your logon credentials through to you know, the, the main servers, which of course sit within CSOP because these accounts are all linked together. Now, a lot of people were speculating this was just simply to do with website load. And I'm not going to state that wasn't a factor, but it doesn't seem to be the primary factor. It wasn't down to the pretty design of the website or doing interesting things with uh, passing credentials in jQuery or any other stuff we've seen lots of threads and speculation on. There appears to be a bit more of a core issue there. Uh, whereas you can argue architecture, I'm sure with the overly explainy Cougar post that's coming up, we're going to get our answers there for those of us that want to dig into the technicalities. Um, but the issue seemed to be that a session, uh, a, a conversation, if you like, a handshake between two people was taking place, say, hey, can I tell you who I am and can I have a name, please? And some of those were working, 
And a lot of them just kind of paused, but they sat there paused, taking up resources until there were no resources left and new conversations couldn't get in. Um, to compound it, a lot of people were being um, a little bit, how shall I phrase this, smart and making good use of the fact that it was something called a RESTful API and you could keep asking the question until you got an answer. Uh, some people quickly posted some scripts and some ways of doing things um, using, let's say, Chrome and developer tools or other things that are out there. And the people using those techniques uh, became 75% of the total requests that were coming through. And I'm very sure it's an awful lot less than 75% of the population. And at one point, they actually thought they were having a distributed denial of service attack until they actually realized this was down to the volume of requests coming from things like um, Firebug and Chrome developer tools and things like that. So unfortunately, it wasn't good for the community. Now, full disclosure, I am very, very lucky. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that I've got the name I want, I've got the guild I want. You're going to see Enigma, funnily enough, and you're going to see Mizper. So I'm going to be upfront about that so no one can say, this is why you have your opinion. Um, whether it was avoidable, the degree to which it should have been avoided, is something I think we have to wait to cast judgment on. I think it's clear that no one wanted this to happen. They didn't want it to happen. We, the community, definitely didn't want it to happen. Um, I've got a lot of very, very frustrated guildies that don't have their names. And... It was a little bit of first come, first serve, but it was a lot of first come, maybe you'll get served if you get through. I'm interested in how they deal with it. I'm interested in whether or not it actually was avoidable in the first place, and I'm reserving a little bit of judgment. The biggest problem they got is that some people got in, got their names. Great. Some people got in, thought they'd got their names, and actually hadn't. That's a bigger problem, because then someone else comes along and says, I'll have Fred. Someone else thinks they've got Fred, but now person two has Fred. So who gets Fred? Or Bob? Or well, Edward or Clarius Herring the Third, or whatever the name might be. The thing is, it's more than just that. You know, the the entire situation behind the actual implementation is a discussion. It is definitely something that we'll receive a post-mortem on. I mean, we've had this thing yep. from Cougar, Gazzy's pointed out it's gonna be translated, and we'll have it on Monday. And many of us who are really curious as to what actually occurred are going to be eating it alive. Um, you know, what really kind of gets me, and this is something that has been brought about, was the fact that this is just sort of the the last frustration over something that a lot of people were frustrated with to begin with. Now, you said something to me a while ago, Ms. Penn, I want to make it clear to other people because it's a fair enough statement that people should have it in their brains. Yes, some people are annoyed with the fact that you have a global reservation of names. And some people are annoyed with the fact that even if you have an umlaut in your name, it still represents the exact same letter with or without the umlaut, thus limiting the amount of names that can actually be registered. I mean, there's a lot of frustration behind that. But you made mention of the fact that, you know, we know that people right now are still in support queues to get their accounts changed from U.S. Yep to EU or EU to US. And there needs to be some kind of flexibility there. And global is probably one of the only ways to solve that problem. Now, one could argue very easily that actually having this didn't really fix anything for name rushes at all because it made it worse because now we have names that are locked in for 14 days. I will be the first to point out, I did not get my name. I got a variation of my name and I'm okay with that because the one who got the name pseudo is another pseudo, but on the American side of the pond. And here I am on the UK side of the pond. And if I want to use pseudo on the UK side of the pond, I have to wait two weeks before it frees up. So, and, you know, and hope that it does free up where we are and it's available. Well, exactly. And hope that everything kind of goes around. But we know for a fact that for two weeks, there's only one pseudo in the Wildstar universe. There's only one because that name is full unlocked. And, you know, they, they've made mention they'll unlock things after two weeks. But what about when someone's actually registered or logged in and then they've used it? Why not clear it up? I mean, there's a lot of other issues that are about this entire topic. What I want to see, and I'm wondering if the postmodern is going to have this, is, you know, this was our intent. This is what occurred. This is why we wanted to do it this way. Now, here's what we're going to do afterwards. Yeah, I mean, there could be... 
and I, th I think there may well be very valid reasons doing it on a global oh. basis. Um, That's the thing. Carbine has never done people... anything without a purpose. Anyone who thinks that Carbine's intent is to drive everyone insane is wrong. They have without it they have they're one of the few development companies oh. and Gaz, you'll have to correct me if i'm wrong in this because you know a lot more than i do but they're one of the few who are unapologetically blunt about where they stand so i would say there's, there's one thing i did want to chime in on in terms of how the name reservation went and that is to kind of sympathize with our australian colleagues who were up until very early in the morning to try and get their name reservation mm. and then found out they were going to have to stay up a couple of hours longer to try and use the system and then it was a a bit of a difficult situation for them now for us in the uk it wasn't that bad because it was evening so we could kind of handle it for the guys in the states it was over their lunch hour for the people in australia who were staying up and and had work in the morning, I really sympathize with yeah. them for, for the uh, issues that it would have put them through. So that's one thing to consider. I think that uh, the issue around situations like, have they been blunt, have they not been blunt, I think yes, they have been very blunt and open to say, yes, this was a problem, and yes, they're, they're looking to resolve it. However, it does kind of, one of the things I'm interested to find out is the level of testing that went on beforehand. What load did they put on the name reservation system to make sure that it could handle this level of traffic? And did they thoroughly make sure that it could handle a diverse selection of requests from people all over the globe very, very quickly? So. Hmm. You'd like to think yes, but obviously we don't know. There was the comment um, on Reddit from Jeremy saying that you know they have not seen issues in that part of the infrastructure previously, so it was a surprise to them. Um, I'd like to infer that means it's been through load testing previously, and for whatever reason, no issues actually emerged. Um, but that, that's the IT geek in me talking about you know best practice. So we don't know. So I'm not going to throw stones or cast aspersions <laughs> until we do. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to pick up on, on a couple of common themes we saw in the community and just give some quick thoughts on them. And um, by the way, these are my opinions. The, you know, the people, I, I want to say here and here, because that's what I can see, but actually it's going to be there and there, or even there and there. Yeah, other way around for everyone else. Um, you know, we may not all agree on this, surprise, surprise. So what did we see a lot of? We saw a lot of people saying, well, why not just have surnames? Now, it can be done, but that has been addressed before. Again, another gaffer comment from way back when, can't recall it. Someone may have to dig me out of source. Um, we're talking about all the other difficulties that that generates. Let's say you're on your server and you want to whisper Fred. That's great. But what happens if there's Fred Alpha and Fred Beta? Well, which Fred are you messaging? Do you have to remember to do the whole thing and encapsulate the survey? How does it work with you know friends lists and mailing lists and sending it to the right Fred? What about cross-server communication? Um, what about how it might impact stuff coming down the line that might not be public yet? So there's something to be said for having unique, unique names. Yes, you can have Fred at server name, but that has its own set of problems. Not saying either is better or worse, I'm just saying it's not a simple, well, there should be surnames, end of conversation. That does come with its own caveats. Um, a lot of people also said, well, clearly we've got to redo it. It didn't work for me uh, in many cases. Now, that's not globally true. Some people just said, well, it didn't work generally. Um, you know, I got my name, but let's redo it. There's issues with that as well. Um, you know, from a PR perspective, I think they would get eaten alive. For the people that sat up all night in Australia, as Gazi was talking about, and then into the morning, for the people that clicked refresh 7,337 and a half times, I don't know how they clicked the half, um, you know, they're going to be pretty upset if they dealt with the same hurdles as everyone else. Yes, got lucky. There's no other way to phrase it. Um, but then they're involved in a redo as well. Difficult. Um, the other option, of course, is to have released the, the server names and be reserving against a server. But we don't know technically what that would have involved. Uh, I can speculate. But it also means releasing server names is a big, big issue. And I really like Cougar's stance on this one. Um, he's trying to hold that list of names close to his chest to 72, 48, maybe even 24 hours before launch. 
yes, it's a pain for those of us trying to organize and get in the right place at the right time together. You know, we're suffering from that. Where are we going? What are we doing? I haven't got a clue yet. But the trade-off with that is they get the chance to look at actual concurrency and actual orders and actual live people and they get the opportunity to set the minimum number of servers so they remain high pop and having a good spread of medium high stroke high pop not having the one or two stupid population and then all the ghost town servers that have got to make for a healthy community and i think that has to be taken into account as being pretty important so those are my thoughts. Um, I'm now going to pause to see what other people think, what they want to throw into the mix. So I think that in terms of the server list, there's also another very good reason why they haven't released the entire list of servers. They want to make sure that until all the pre-orders are in, totaled up, and they have an actual fairly good idea of how many players are going to be in going live. Because don't forget, a lot of people are going to be on the fence until they've got through open beta. And I suspect there's a fair few people who have actually set aside this weekend to actually play Wildstar, test it, and see if it's a game that they want to buy. As a result, I think that they're probably going to wait until very close to the line and then spin up a collection of servers. It won't be all the servers that they can go live with. It'll just be a subset of them. And as they fill up, they will add further ones to it. It means that if you want to play with people on the same server, you need to try and coordinate and be organized. But I wouldn't be surprised if you see a smaller collection of servers to start with and then further ones being added as that um, early access weekend progresses. Now, here's where I pipe in. There, I mean, I understand holding them close to your chest. I get that. I understand it. And I, I can completely empathize with the points you're bringing out. But I have to kind of jump on the boat with something that Mitchell's just posted in chat. You know, one of the frustrating things is the fact that we do have a stance from the developers of non RP PVP servers of what's the point. And yeah. for a lot of people, that is actually a realm that they enjoy and they appreciate. And yet, there is even hesitancy if that's even going to exist. At this current moment in time, all I can think of is it's not because there's been such this, no, no, they're very like, no, I don't see a point behind this. I mean, these are things that have been said by Cougar. These are things that have been tweeted out. And, you know, I have to kind of take them at face value for what they're saying. But if they don't give us a heads up about um, let's say that for us in the EU, I mean, there's a certain amount of servers that are going to be dedicated to German. There's a certain amount of servers dedicated to French. There's going to be a certain amount of servers dedicated to English. Now, this does mean that if we don't know what servers are present, the people who want to have those types of communities can't band together to ensure that the server that they pick doesn't flood up quickly at start and lock out everybody who wants to have a kind of RP PVP environment. So there's a little bit still in the frustration side of things for the players in the community when a niche, and yeah, it is a niche. Not everybody likes role play. Not everybody likes PVP. You put the two together and it is a bit of a niche category, but it is one that is still heavily celebrated. And yet it's one that's the community themselves are trying to figure out, well, okay, if we can't have an RP PVP server, well, we're a role play community. How do we make certain that all the role players who want that role play PVP experience are on the same server? And yet they're going to be thrown in with people who are going to be anti role play. If you are a straight up PVP or and your server says PVP, you walk in on some people trying to have a role play event. It just basically gives you license to troll. It's kind of negative for the environment and for the community. We, we, we say that, but let's give, an, let's give an example. It can actually work the other way as well. Um, you know, it's, oh, it's God, yeah, they both, they both Enigma, will hit into each other. That's the problem. But it's a known fact that, for example, Enigma, we were looking to roll on a RP PVP. The idea being to give everyone in our group the chance to play in as many different playstyles as possible and not exclude anyone from anything. And we've done it before in other games. It's been the, the server style and monkey that we've always played on. Now, uh, I'm, I'm still asking some questions. We'll see what happens because there have been official tweets in the past saying, yes, these will exist. 
And it's only recently now that's being official tweets and information saying we know they're not going to exist. We have to take so, the most you know, recent because, you know, as we know, things change. We've seen changes. We, we do. So we do, but I, I, I can hope. And, and as memory dump is saying, in line with what you've just said, you can get people going there specifically to troll. But a community but can the police advantage that. advantage that the community can police it, but you also have the advantage that a rule set specific to the server type can be enforced. It needs resources, it needs the will to do so, but it can make for a much, much better environment. But consider this conversation that I had with someone not so long ago. Um, they're looking to organize an RP event on the server. I got approached to say, could we be hired, literally, as guards? So those of us who want to RP in the guild can go and get involved with the event. The rest of us can sit there outside the event quite happily going, come on then. And it actually creates that community where we've got the group there assisting one group with their playstyle, but having fun with another playstyle at the same time. It can be turned into a net positive. It, it all depends on how it's done. It can, but think about that. How many people who straight up roll PvP would give any credence to people who are trying to do any kind of role play event at all? I mean, I remember well, those people I, well, see, straight up should be on a straight up PvP server. Problem is, if Carbine has defined all the servers as straight up PvP and there's nothing segregating into an RP PvP, what you've basically said is, sorry, role players. If you want to role play and have a PVP environment, roll on a role play server and flag yourself for PVP. But that type of community that is role play only that doesn't want the PVP type of element, that inherently brings more problems. I mean, honestly, there is a way to handle this and it is a bit of a frustration for the community, but there are certain mindsets. I remember very, very, very much so being on a PVP server and People, if you did any form of role play in any way, shape, or form, you were belittled by the PvP community because you were wasting their time. Because their so, server was their server. Now, I'm not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying these are things that could impact the community that need mm -hmm. to either be planned for by the community, supported by the devs, or else it ain't going to mean nothing. And there's not going to be any way for someone who's been bullied or put through torture or what have you to stand up because it's like, well, sorry, you're on a PvP server. Suck it up. So as someone who has played on both RP and RP PvP servers. I think that the issue that you mentioned in terms of there being no RP PvP servers at present is a difficult one. Now, there's two things I'd like to point out. First of all, World of Warcraft did not launch with RP mm -hmm. PvP servers. Correct. They only came in post-launch. Correct. So it may be that they are assessing the demand for these particular types of servers before they launch them. And I have to be honest with you, even after the launch, those particular types of servers were heavily underpopulated, almost to the point of the economy struggling to function. Now, in an economy-heavy game like Wildstar, where you've got the option for cred and mm -hmm. other um, influences of that nature, I think that that's a strong concern where they want to ensure that they can reach a minimum base population before committing to a particular type of server. That said, I think that if they do decide to go with just the RP service to begin with and then spin up RP PVP as a subset later on, they should offer a period. Now, this is something that other MMOs have done in the past is when they bring in new server types, they offer free transfers. It's a bit of a shakedown. So you can say, OK, if you didn't manage to get your character on the same server as the guild that you wanted to join, or if you ended yeah. up rolling somewhere else, but you want to move to a different server or stuff like that, having a kind of free transfer window where you can move to the server mm. that you want afterwards, that might be a viable solution. I think the problem that you've got is that you can, you can really cut down the number of servers and really tightly defined. So you want some which are RP PVP, you, want, you might want some which are strict RP, some which are casual RP, you get the idea. Um, and you can really push it to the nth degree. I would much rather Carbine say, okay, we're just gonna have these three to start with and see what the demand is like, but also offer, once they've settled on how many server types they're offering, to offer a free transfer, not just to swap server types, but also to 
get a chance to play with your friends more as well. Well, that's going to be slightly eliminated by the fact <coughs> that um, oh, you didn't quite get there in time. Poor Miz. Um, but one of the one of the side effects, uh, or I should say one of the statements that's been made is we know for a fact that they are offering the ability to group up with friends, whether you're on the same server or not, for instance, content. We know that this is already being implemented. Why should they have to take it to that next level and say, here, have some free server stuff? I mean, one could argue they've already put something in place. So even if you don't get onto the same server, it's okay. Now, some people have stated that with this name system or the name issues that have occurred with name registration, that they should offer free name changes to people who did not get their name. That, I think, mm -hmm. is going to be a very difficult thing for them to implement, to be perfectly honest with you. But my hope is that there is something in place like that. If there isn't, I will understand. But, you know, at the same time, five boom boxes doesn't quite equate to a, a personal identity. So hopefully there will be yeah. some balance, but the same thing can be said about the service. I mean, we can hope, we really can hope that what they, what they do is they go, we know that this is a bit of an issue, but here you go. Yeah. The, my my concern really like is if they don't start out with an RP PVP server, that community is always going to be small because it was never there to begin with. It wasn't a founding I think, server. I, okay. I think that you can, you can, argue that. I think that the RP PVP community is generally small to begin with. And I don't think that, I think that you can cater to a lot of smaller groups, but at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you can actually have a server that functions as well. And the, it would be probably worse to say to the RP PVP community, here you are, here's a server, especially for you. Oh, look, there's 300 people rolling on it we need to merge you with another server. That would be worse. So I would completely respect yeah. the way that Carbine's doing it. it but it, it is a I would also, one. I would also mm. say that I think that Carbine should offer a Nexus welcome package to every player that joins, at least in the first couple of weeks. One of those is a free transfer token, and one of those is a free name change token. Now, I think that would take care of 99% of issues relating to naming problems, as in you named your character incorrectly, you were in a bit of a rush, you did a typo, and then you couldn't change it. Because um, no one would ever do that, try to name something in a hurry, would they? No, never. Just, just wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. So, Mizpa. Uh, yeah. So I think that those kind of features would work very well. I think that um, trying to cater for everything... I mean, it, to, yeah. to use IT parlance, you can cater for every single use case, but it ramps up either your development costs or the um, um, the amount of testing that you have to do. Or you can take a subset of use cases, release those to start with, and then uh, add further ones as you go. And I would say that in 90% of the of IT development I've seen, you go with a smaller subset of use cases and then develop more later on that's iterative agile development yeah which of one thing to elaborate sense. on um and i was going to bring this one up is i could see some logic in certainly giving those people that pre-ordered a name change token it does cover a lot of eventualities there are two things probably to consider um first three so let's let's put the first one out there there were threads in the forums and i'm sorry the people who believe these threads um I, I can't side with your views or your argument, um, who were under the impression that this was a engineered situation for the purpose of delivering a paid name change service later. Now, let's just be crystal clear on this. There is always, but always going to be paid name changes. There is always, but always going to be paid server transfers. It's a done thing. It exists in other games. It's a revenue stream. Why on earth wouldn't they do it? Because it takes resource to manage that sort of thing. Even in another well-known game, the process of transferring someone from A to B involves a human being. It does not involve just pushing a button. Therefore, it has a cost. Now, I'm all for seeing some name changes get float floating around the place. 
I don't know what the financial impact that is on projections and their expected sales rate and how that factors into their magical spreadsheets and things like that. So it's difficult for me to say, well, what's the business impact of it? I personally would like to see it, but I'd like to see it something along the lines of this is valid for 30 days and then it expires. That's probably reasonable. It gives people, you're outside that 14-day lock, you can assess what's going on, you either were affected and you're going to use it, or you weren't affected, so actually you don't need it anyway. And you don't yeah. shouldn't necessarily get that freebie. So yeah. an expiring one, I'm all for, but we don't know if the tech can handle that. Well, I would agree. It's, 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 a, it's something that I would look at adding in. And if it's if it's simple and straightforward to develop, it's it's a nice, easy, elegant way of solving the issue for a large group of people. Yes, you're always going to get edge cases and fringe cases, but you've got to you've got to cut the knife somewhere and say this is as far as you as as you can include people. But um, I would say that yes, while RP and RP PVP are important as subset communities, so is actually having a server that works and functions as a cohesive yeah. group of people. Well, see, that's the thing. I mean, one of the things that we tried from the very get-go, one of the things that attracted us to Wildstar besides the game itself is the community. And I hate to say it, but this past week with the name change scenarios, I got to see a side of the community that I really wish would have stayed under a rock. Um, you know, there is something to be said for, and this is something we've, we've stressed in previous shows that we've done, you know, when you're doing a beta, you're not getting the full thing. We know for a fact that we don't even have the full game in open beta. I mean, all of the Dr yeah. Drusera quests aren't in the beta on purpose. They want to make mm -hmm. certain that there's still content that you haven't seen before, whether you care about the story or not. There's stuff that's yeah. going to be brought out that Last, you don't know about. GA. Not exactly. In the, not in the beta. Exactly. Beta not in the beta. Exactly. So, you know, we have things like that. But when you have an entire community that seem to go from, yay, this is awesome, to immediately slamming without giving criticism that is feedback that can be used. I mean, there, there's a huge difference between sitting there going, okay, like what we're doing here, we're discussing possible issues, problems, and things that we think make sense. We're not slamming Wildstar, we're not slamming Carbine, we're not slamming the developers. You know, we're just looking at this from different viewpoints. Yet I saw so much negativity, hate, hostility in the forums that I stopped looking. Mm -hmm. And that kind of community is something I want to try and make certain that we prevent. I mean, we're the only way a community can be really strong is if we as a group police it. It makes a difference whether it's on the server, whether you're a small server or a large server. It makes no difference whether you're speaking a particular language or not. It is up to us to try to work together to ensure that the community remains strong. And that does mean, believe it or not, folks supporting the developers. You can disagree with something they've done, but don't disagree with them to the point where you're just going to sit there and slam and say, I'm never going to buy this game because you guys suck. Screw you. Okay. Six months on from now, note. we're not going to care about what happened today. You know what I mean? On that note, on that note, I would say that there's one thing that's quite important. Um, everyone likes playing armchair developer. If you've been playing MMOs <laughs> beyond any kind of type, everyone enjoys playing armchair developer. Everyone, Game developer tycoon was very successful. Yeah. Uh, everyone has their pet instance or pet dungeon that they would love to create. They've got it as kind of like a collection of MS Paint sketches or something like that. Everyone has a particular monster or a particular quest that they'd like to have designed and, and implemented. And everyone likes to argue about system semantics, particularly when you've got a large number of people who yeah. either work in the IT industry or stuff like that or expect things to work. But guess what? An MMO is not like your Netflix subscription. It's not like your cable subscription and stuff like that. Anyway, you. what I was going to say is that there, is two, there are two different things here. One is being apologetic on behalf of the developers. And I don't think anyone needs carbine apologists. The other one is being able to understand the situation that carbine is going through and occasionally forgive them for the mistakes that occur. 
that is something different. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we are in the realms of being apologetic on behalf of Carbine. Hey, they can do that themselves. They and actually they're pretty good at apologizing. Mm -hmm. and it wouldn't surprise well, me if they, we get apologies. Have. You know, yeah. Yeah. There, there is a thread up entitled "An Apology from the Devs." There exactly. you go. The latest exactly. information. Taking so, responsibility. Exactly. <laughs> what I do think is that. As as fans of the franchise of the um, the franchise of fans of Wild Stand of what Carbine have been putting together, that we tend to be more accommodating of uh, saying, okay, you goofed up, but we forgive you. You've actually said why the yeah. issues happened and what you're doing to mitigate it in future, and and so on and so forth. And that counts for an awful lot. Other developers would say, uh, yeah, we had a problem, and yeah, yeah. Yo, I'll solve it. Check it out happened. my beat while the DJ <laughs> revolves it. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we're yet to find out, and it's why I'm not commenting too much, or as much as I'd like to, yeah. on, on the, the reality of, was it preventable? Was it testable? Was mm. it entirely in their control? To what degree are they using uh, NCSoft parent services that they are obliged to use? Um, there's so many things we don't potentially know yet. Correct. So... I will say one thing, and this, this may come across as, um, I don't think it's being apologies for them, but you're looking at a development company who had a history of being fair, being open, being reasonable, and communicating strongly. Now, if that hasn't put a deposit in people's tolerance bank by now, well, they're not getting the respect they perhaps should. That's, that's not a free pass. It doesn't mean, hey, I've been great, so now I can cut babies into small pieces because the world doesn't work like that you know there, there's still a common standard of decency and that doesn't fall within it um but wow. i think you have to pay some attention to what they've done already now if the mm. norm is something not working one time after another that perception changes but what we've just seen is not the norm yes it was a big deal but let's look at what's happening in open beta Let's look how well it's handled load. Let's look at what the concurrency was on the first day compared to every other test up until that point in time. People are saying, the sky is falling, the game will crash, they can't run a game server. No, that was a web server doing a handoff SSO auth to a third-party service. That is not the same as the game servers. In fact, there is so little overlap between the two, it, it's, it's slightly amusing. Um, Note, by the way, whilst this was happening, you could still log in to open beta without any problems during the period of high load. And yeah. that is important to note. Now, I can... I'm going to stop on this one because we'll be talking about this next week once we've got the ops thing. And I haven't got into raiding yet. No, you haven't. And it's a shame because we're getting very close to the end of our showtime yes. as well. But I think it's worth noting. I mean, this is a particular topic that there are a lot of opinions on. And I think it's a good idea for people to at least see different opinions because there was, like I said, a lot of trash. And I don't think people took everything on board. And my hope is that the things that we've talked about and we've discussed, like you said, they don't necessarily give a free pass to Carbine for any choices or anything that they have made. But if people take a moment and just go, okay, cool. So this is a possibility. This is something that's going, we've got an answer coming on Monday. Can we leave it alone until then? There are much better things to discuss until that point. And hopefully mm -hmm. that will be something that we see occurring within the community itself. But, you know, hey, raiding. So how about them raiders? It, yeah, indeed, but before, so... before, before we do that, <laughs> face palms, you know, you, you know when we start. <laughs> Apparently he but... keeps missing the first half hour of every show. So you, you're going to have to let people know when we're on soon. I will okay, do that so at the end raiding. because I've got some news at the end anyway. But yes, go ahead. Rating. Rating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry to you, but rating. Hardcore. No, no, you're allowed to interrupt. So, yeah. Rating. Hardcore. Hardcore. Um, I am so thoroughly looking forward to Wildstar's rating. It's scary. Um, I think the last time I've been this excited about rating is when they were looking at uh, Burning Crusade rating. And... Mm -hmm when I was looking at Budding Crusade rating and looking at the challenges that were uh, coming up and the, what was it they were called? They, they had some guild-destroying bosses that were coming up. I 
I'm really looking forward to the way it's been described as challenging but not frustrating, fun but not easy. And yeah. I think that's one of the key factors which is drawing me into this. I do have a little bit of sympathy for people who say, oh, but we can't get 20 people together, or, oh, but we can't get 40 people together. But them's the rubs. You deal with it. Um, and uh, Brett Schneider has turned around and said, well, we'll be looking at metrics anyway and seeing how things pan out. But I wouldn't be surprised if they stick to their guns and say, no, we're just going to roll out with more 20 and 40 man content. I wouldn't. All, I would also not be surprised if they turn around and, and start rolling out additional raid tiers before the vast majority of players have completed the previous ones. Well, so I would expect to see new raid dungeons before the old ones are complete. Yeah, but, but I hope so. Yeah, but that's kind of what they um, said on the AMA. Sorry? Uh, That's not exactly what well, they said they, on the AMA. There, there, was, there was a reference to it as well. Yeah, there was a reference to it as well. But also, they did an interview with, um, in fact, I think it was Mike Donatelli who did an interview on MMORPG.com who said a similar kind of thing about having additional rates before the first was completed. So there is a little bit of ambiguity there. Um, I would definitely not expect to see people completing the existing collections of raids within the first three months. I think that people might be able to get through genetic archives uh, within, say, the first two months, maybe if they're lucky the first month, month of play. But I think that... You're forgetting um, attunement. Not just let... That's the thing. Exactly. You know, people, yeah. people think, yes, you know, right oh, after oh, oh, we oh. start... So there is one very important thing on attunement. So... After you hit level 50, yes, you will have to do an epic quest line involving most of your guild in order to get a tune to do the raid. However, the end boss in Datascape, the 40 man, drops an item that will instantly attune yeah. someone to that raid. And it's BOE, so you can sell it to someone. Expect it to see it at an auction house near you, not soon, but in the future, for more coin yes. than you can possibly contemplate owning. Yes, I can, I can and just someone imagine, somewhere will buy it. Yeah, I can just imagine Anres thinking, yeah, how can I get my hands on a few of them? Yeah, they love them. but um, you know, interesting that it's coming. It's a, it's a one, I believe it's a one confirmed drop per end boss kill of the 40 men. Now, we're a long way away from that. A long, long way. Yes. The, I've, I saw someone in the Wild Street earlier um, going, me and my girl, we're going to be in GA in the first week. What do you think of that? Um, I think, how are you going to get the Elder Gems that are going to take you more than a week to acquire, which is one of the steps of the achievement quest? <laughs> so there's a lot to do, but the nice thing about the achievement quest, as I understand it, is it involves being good at playing the game. So if you are going to be doing the Vec Dungeons and chasing these golds and these silvers, and I think it might be silver you need to get on all of them to actually get in, um, you're going to have to play the game to do that. But you're going to be doing that naturally because you're going to be gearing up, prepping, getting ready. So the play style that you're going to want to be playing to make yourself ready to raid is part of what you need to do to walk through the darn door. So that is smart design. And I like the fact that as a raid leader, let's say for whatever reason, we need to pull some people in from outside. Just the fact they can walk through the door tells me something, particularly in the first couple of months of the game. Six months down the line, maybe not so much, but by then there'll be new stuff and there'll be new tiering and there'll be new pathways to it. And I hope they always keep that element of dedication a player needs to get through because there's a ton of content that isn't raiding and that's vital. The people that are going, I'm paying the same money as everyone else. I demand to see all the content huh? or whatever it is they do. <laughs> no, just no, because okay. by diluting the content, everyone else, you demand the to see rest the of us. Oh, hold on a second. What was that, Gazi? I was going to say, if you, if you 
say you pay for all the content, you pay the same as anyone else, you didn't want to see all the content, right, fair enough, I expect to see you in war plots from 9am sharp. See, that's the thing. I think people kind of forget that, you know, when you're paying for an MMO, especially something that has a subscription model, and that one of the big arguments is, well, I pay, so I should have access to absolutely everything. You do have access to absolutely everything. You just have to work to get it. And it was stated in the AMA, the um, rating AMA, you know, hey, if you plan on playing 20 hours a day, because there are some people crazy like that, naughty typing. But if you uh, plan on once a BC areas. <laughs> yes. But if you plan on playing twenty hours a day and getting really good at what you play and everything else like that, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to chew through certain content because you're going to have the skill set required to do so. If you only occasionally do a veteran, maybe once in a while you do a you know a, a PvP thing, etc., you are not going to have the same skill sets or the same knowledge that somebody who is trying to say either specialize in pure PVP and all they do is PVP or someone who does nothing but veterans or someone who does, you know, nothing but X and Y. I mean, there's so many different things in this game content wise. This does not mean that you don't have access to it. It means you must work harder to gain access. How many people are familiar with the joke that was made? And I can't remember the comedian's name, but he's bald and just the thing. Games are the one of the few things that we pay for in our society for entertainment where we are not guaranteed to win, where we are not guaranteed to see full content. Oh, Michael O'Hara talking about uh, rock bands Dara O'Brien. guitar here. It was Dara O'Brien. Uh, O'Brien. O'Brien. Uh, <laughs> talking about uh, Guitar Hero and saying that uh, he was a bit annoyed that he paid, played for Guitar Hero because he wanted to play the, uh, one of the Beastie Boys songs. And he uh, said, oh, brilliant, I've got it all set up, got it home. Right, Beastie Boys, anyone? And then uh, found out that he had to unlock uh, <laughs> every single song before it, before you could play that one. It's like, mm -hmm. isn't there a cheat code or something? But to be honest, it's, I mean, Memory Dump came up with a similar uh, analogy. A gym membership gives you access to the yeah, like 50 pound dumbbells. It doesn't mean you can actually lift them. True. It doesn't mean you can attempt it though. Don't, it because you will yeah, hurt you... yourself without help and support and without <laughs> actual training, seeing a comparison here, without the actual training in place, you could hurt yourself. Would yes. you rather spend you your know? time completely frustrated because you can't take a boss down because you haven't mastered the double jump? Yeah. And yes, and uh, by the way, do not control. do not enter a forty man raid by yourself because I suspect you will hurt yourself. There you go. There's a there's a straight similarity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh gosh, absolutely. But yes, I'm really looking forward to reading for my own personal reading re readings reasons. You guys have your special things. I want to go back to making memories. Those moments so where you fail spectacularly or you succeed spectacularly? Mm -hmm. yes. Let's dive into a couple of nuggets because there were some gems that came out. Um, in the, Be in the aware, AI. we can't stay online with our show oh. for very, very, very much longer. I will be calling it at 15 after if we push that far, and which means we've well, got well, roughly 16 you, minutes. You, how, how about this? We're on time at the moment. Why don't we say that we'll do some free-for-all rating related questions in the post show? So, you know, we've been here because for an hour. People know where to I find us all interview. the time. Ah. Well, we could do 15 minutes of post show if we wrap the show up now. How about that? We definitely can. We could probably do roughly about 20, but, you know. And there are certain things I need to tell people about for this next week. So let me knock that out now so I get it out of the way, and then we can do a partial post show with the raid thing. Sound good? Yeah, that means I can leap to one side and grab my curry as well. Yes, you can leap to one side. Just go ahead and leap. We've we've got this. This is just some stuff for people Gassy, to do. I, I demand I demand seeing a double jump at this point. <laughs> Barrel roll is optional. <laughs> at this point. 
<laughs> and we now see the ceiling of the guy's mouth. Right. So let me get this done and through as quickly as I possibly can be because then we can talk about rating and all that other stuff and things like that because that is something that interests us. So starting out Monday. Oh, no, sorry. <sighs> I get myself confused. Tomorrow we have Top Draw occurring and we are looking into a new game. For those of you who like TCGs, CCGs and SCGs, we've got a show. It's Top Draw. It's Saturday. It's 8 p.m. And we're looking at a game called Battle for Battle for Gia. Huh. And boy, is that an interesting game. Monday. Hopefully, Ms. Pun and I will be back together to Battle Heads in the MMO Buff podcast where we discuss all kinds of topics that cover MMOs, online gaming, and sometimes we actually have guests on to discuss random bits of yep. things as well. Tuesday, the campfire. We have some people coming on from Death and Cake, and it's not the typical campfire about communities that we're doing. This time, instead of us grilling our guest, our guest is going to be grilling Screenager, Blank Space, and myself. On Wednesdays, we have the Blizzard forecast, which has Hearth trolled in. Parv from Yogscast, Mizpa, myself, Dr. Marshmallows, and Real Blank Space covering all things Blizzard related from Heroes of the Storm to Hearthstone, blah, you name it. You name something Blizzard and it is disgust. Then Thursday of next week, during the daytime, we have our very first show of the data mine. And this is a show for people who are interested in game development. This is literally the other side of the coin. We have a developer on who is going to be hosting the show with me, and we are going to be covering everything from engines to how do you do marketing to how do you handle um, legalization problems in different countries. And in fact, our second episode, which is the week afterwards, we have the CEO of Yuki, U-K-I-E dot org so that's going to be a really interesting type of a show so if you're interested in that kind of stuff do note that that is going to be at 1 p.m british time and it is so when people have their lunch they can enjoy learning about stuff like this but then next friday cosmetronic isn't going to be on no. so cosmetronic is taking a week off because we kind of need a break um some of us are some of us are heading to a wedding so I won't be around and others need to just have a little break to feel better and also to Kai Dream Hearts I do hope you feel better my dear we Good are well. missing you we're missing you greatly so yes these are things that you need to be aware of for the next week there is also going to be for those of you who like 4x strategies and if you know what a 4x strategy is you're going to get serious props from me because they're a style of game unto themselves we have a new YouTube series that'll be coming out for 4x strategies and you'll just have to make certain you follow us on twitter facebook anook youtube and all of the social medias but pseudo yes. just so that face palms isn't half an hour late for the next show oh yes oh yes for those of you who are interested and if you Sorry, actually <laughs> Don't worry, face bombs. I love you. That's all that matters. Mispa is a whole different can of worms. Wait, he's over there. Mispa is a whole different can of worms. I still love you. But anyway, we are on on UK 8 p.m. It makes a difference whether it is in the summer or the winter or the times have changed. Pay attention. It's 8 p.m. except for Thursdays, which are at 1 p.m. That's not meant to confuse you. It's just meant to let you guys know that this, that particular show isn't always going to be for everyone. It's not always, we're not going to be sitting there telling you how to play a game or discussing a game. We're literally going to be talking about the entire game development cycle. Everything from, like I said, what engines you use to how you handle um, the art assets. What do you do if you want to do something independently? What if you want have an idea you want to take to a AAA developer? How do you work in QA? What is this actually all about? What game Game positions did you not know existed and what does it take to actually bring a game from hey it's in my head to available for purchase and it is a lot of topics and we're going to have a lot of guests on we have a lot of developers coming on to talk development so be prepared if you are really really interested in getting into game development that's what that show is literally like about. One. You might. And do be prepared. The technical skill set required to understand some of the things we'll discuss might be a little higher. Because if you don't quite understand things like object-oriented development, we can get into that. We can talk about things like that. But the point behind the show is to give people an insight. It's literally 
game development for game developers. It's a sort of, I guess you could say it's, it's therapy. It's group therapy for developers, <laughs> an asset for them. So um, if you're interested in stuff like that, please come check it out. It's, it's going to be interesting. It really is. But yes. So that's all that. Okay. Yes. You now have nine minutes to talk rating. Nine. I'm still seeing us on the live stream myself. Yes, but then we just got I just got a message saying that. Ah. ah some reason, for some silly reason. Ah. For some silly, silly reason, um, we got cut off. We didn't mean to cut it. No, we didn't. That was that was weird. I don't understand what happened. But Ms. Pa, there we go. Are we back? You have Ready. 14 minutes. Raid. Okay. So let's start with a couple of quick things. We're going to dive in. I'm going to listen to some comments and chat, see what it is, and see how much I can handle and how much of the AMA I've actually been able to memorize between then and now. This will be interesting. Um, let's start with the comment we had from uh, BC Arias that I'm probably mispronouncing. Now, I believe BC said, oh, yeah. Larius. Uh, Larius. Larius. Back, back from the dead. Um, I believe you said earlier that the tumors are not time gated, and you are mostly correct. But my understanding is that you will need to get a little over a week's worth of Elder Gem. So that will put a forced minimum time scale of a week onto your achievement process post level 50. Um, and if you can manage the rest of the achievement process inside of that week, you are going to be in the minority, not in the majority. I'm not saying it's impossible but saying it's part of the process. So there you go. Did, did you just go away and miss the answer? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, that's what happens when we do things um, and things go crazy. In fact, actually, if you guys have literally any questions when it comes to writing, feel free to hit us. But um, I will tell you, the leveling process takes time, even if you rush. I will tell you, the attunement takes time, even if you rush. Um, and I will also tell you that even after you set foot into your raiding environment, working and conforming your raid into a cohesive unit sometimes takes time as well. Unless you've been the same people that you have been for the past 10 years in the same game, or maybe mixing it up, but always working together. But if you've got new blood, you're going to have to teach them. And it's not a matter of teaching them the skill sets to raid. I'm talking about teaching them the skill sets to work with what you guys consider a raid. And that is something that requires patience. But yes. So, BC Iris, if you can get that done inside of, I think, an absolute minimum would be 10 days. And I think that's very optimistic. I'd love you to come back and tell us about it. Um, After I think to most, most people, <laughs> to most people, doing it within 14 days, I think, would present a, a hurdle. There will always be the, the true, um, I hate the word, the true hardcore crowd, the, the few percent I, within the entirety of the game that will push stuff hard. You know, yeah. You're going to see Nilum and D&T and the other guilds that, this one's they don't represent the norm in the raiding community. They are the creme de la creme for a reason. Yep. They repeatedly post these results for a reason. And, you know, they will be ahead of the curve, but because they have a lot of publicity, and they're great, by the way, I love a lot of these guys, I know a lot of these guys, um, but people start to think this is the average, this is where I should be. Well, you don't look at a Formula One racing grid and go, I need to be as fast as Michael Schumacher. You might go, I'd like to be as fast and talented as Michael Schumacher. Maybe you are, uh, but most people won't be by definition. I'm just going to so, simply say hardcore, but I'm going to pull in a question that we've had um, put into the chat, and this is from Face Palms. Are raids all one difficulty, or are there normal slash he he sees HCs okay. and um, um, no, there are no normal slash HCs that we know of at the moment in raids. However, there is a natural split in difficulty in that 40-man yes. content is designed to be harder than 20-man content. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. let's elaborate here for a minute. Firstly, um, harder does not mean the difficulty inherent in getting 40 herded cats into the same place at the same point in time ready to go. That's just an innate part of dealing with 40-man raids. It's why some people don't like them. It's partly why some people love them. But from a design perspective, having that wider group of players gives you more ability to say, well, they'll probably be this debuff in the raid. 
there'll probably be so many tanks in the raid. But because you have more to work with, you get a better spread in terms of numbers. That gives you so many more options from a design perspective. And I know that you can do a great job with 20-man raids, don't get me wrong. Um, and even in rare cases with, with, with tents, uh, I'd have to go back to things like uh, Mira and Firefight of where it's really done well. But generically speaking, more players, more design options, there is more scope. With more scope, you can achieve more stuff. And they are deliberately intending the 40-man raids to be a harder difficulty than 20. I also want to point out that there is a progression that has been stated in the AMA. You start out by learning how to play. You then get into ship hands. You then can get into adventures. You then have dungeons. Then you have veterans. Then you have 20 mans. And then you have 40. So do understand yep. that there is a progressive step. And they have stated in the AMA they are doing this because they want people to learn how to play this game. They are trying to ensure that you have the tools available to actually accomplish the difficulty that they're trying to set. And, you know, honestly, they have thought beyond just simply how do we make a raid? They've already stated there is no such thing as trash in their raids. It's called base population. And honestly, from what I have seen, yeah, every single thing that you would run across in a raid could technically be considered a mini boss, even if it's not, because you have to figure out the best way to handle it. You then have to figure out the secret. It's all puzzles. I mean, the, technically speaking, that's what raiding is. You are presented with a puzzle. You must solve it with what tools that you have in your arsenal. Now, do keep in mind that even after that, it's not just bosses you need to go up against. It's rooms of doom. This is not just you going, hey, we need to get from point A to point B. You have eggs you need to do. Just eggs. Just understand eggs are, and they, they talk about this in the AMA. Eggs are nasty. But on top of that, there's also uh, at, rooms. At some point, Pseudo, we may have to stream eggs. Oh, God. <laughs> at some point, we may have to. But holy cow, eggs. Just just <laughs> eggs is all I'm going to say. But on top of that, there's That's... also rooms completely designed to drive you insane. There's no boss encounter you've got to beat up. You just have to make it through the bloody room. Good luck. Right. <laughs> yeah, boss level room they're talking about and uh, reference to eventers and all sorts of bits and pieces yep. getting in there. Now, a few few quick things. Um. Scanning at high speed. Coolman, um, boss is harder in wild style than in WoW. I guess it depends on how you read, read hard. There's many different things out there. Telegraphs give them a number of options. There's an expectation you know where the fire is. They expect you not to be standing in it. It frees up a lot from a design perspective. If you've seen the raids dev speak, if you saw the videos coming from PAX, you'll have seen some of the stuff we have to deal with. Yes. Now, it's also worth pointing out, particularly when people saw the big spiral of doom and the PAX presentation. Yeah. You know, no one had time to turn around and even fire a shot at the boss in the middle because if you paused, you were dead. It's worth pointing out one thing from the AMA. Um, for visual purposes, they picked on some of the flashiest things out there. And they also noted these fights often have phases. Often there is a movement phase. Think back to the Heigham dance uh, back in the day or other things. Um, in a movement phase, your priority, frankly, isn't doing DPS, it's staying alive. You can do DPS as well, that is a bonus. And where we've seen big telegraphs, they're phases of fights, maybe lasting five seconds, 10 seconds, maybe even 30, but there's plenty of DPS time in there as well. They'd have to be for things to actually work. Now, Coleman asked whether or not bosses is harder, but also there's no 40-man raids in Wildstar. There are absolutely, totally 100% 40-man raids in Wildstar. That's there a fact are. that makes me very, very happy because I've been desperately waiting for those days to come back since the end of Vanilla WoW and um, things like Naxxaramas and Four Horsemen. So I, for one, maybe I'm in the minority, even if they kick us to Kingdom Come, I'm thoroughly looking forward to having them. 20-man or 40-man content is different. This is not the 20-man, 40-man version. These are two different things, two different design intents. You're going to have to get in there and deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to keep scanning down for questions. Um, a comment came up about what about the large variety of catch up mechanisms and mechanics. Well, I think they're needed, but I think they need to be balanced. Um, they need to not trivialize the content or provide a gateway to entry that's shortcutting the learning curve. Now, I have no issue with a new player coming into the game having mechanics to be able to join the group, the guild they're with, and do what they're looking to do. 
but you need to make sure that player still has the opportunity to be taught by the game. Now, yes, we talked about the BOE token coming from the last boss of Datascape. That will help, particularly if it's in guild and it's a trusted person. You're just going to hand that token to them if you're the sort of guild that lots of us are. Um, on another front, as the game evolves, you know, gear will scale and tier as content is released. Newer gear will make it easier to go back and do things like achievements uh, and achievements. So that will help from that degree. And there's probably other things in there as well. I will go and check out that thread, be hilarious, and comment on it later. And I keep scrolling down. I want to what point out thought? something, you know, when it comes to doing anything like raids, etc. And I do apologize, you will see a cat tail. We are currently being cat bombed by my cat. Um, but yes, when it comes to doing raids and things like that, guys, at some point, I'm sure everyone will get a chance to see it. Just because you're not one of the first does not make you one of the worst players in the world. Please do not look down on other people who don't have your play style. Please remember to keep the community strong, support each other, and understand that just because someone is quote-unquote knocking down bosses a lot faster than you are doesn't necessarily <laughs> make them... Poor Mizpa doesn't necessarily make them quote unquote better. It's just, you know, currently that's where the skill set happens to be, and hopefully you'll get the chance yeah. to get to that I'd, point. I, I would add my belief of the design intent. Whether they put it off, we remains to be seen. Yeah. But it's promising. Um, if you're completing a raid, if you're in a raid, if your ex boss is deep in a raid full stop, um, almost pretty much doesn't matter when, you're still achieving proper raiding. Yeah. Um, you know, they have said again and again and again, they are not going to trivialize, trivialize past raid content. Yes. They reserve the right to look at metrics and react to them, and that's just sensible. But don't expect to see, well, if I did it after this point in time, it didn't have this buff, and it's easy, or I did it before this point in time, I did it pre-patch 443 or whatever yeah. Sunbolt was. Um, hopefully we'll never see that. They're trying hard to avoid it. I... Right, I'm going to keep scrolling down, because I know there's other things in there. Well, I was going to 40 say... man raids are so hard. Does it mean they will drop better loot, says Ozone Fire? Yes, as Ozone a matter Fire. of fact. Yes. It, it, it's, it's been stated. What is going to end up happening is 20 man content is going to give you beautiful, awesome, um, and I just put Gazimov on the screen for some strange reason, even though it's his um, ceiling we're looking it's at. Gazimov's ceiling. Um, it's the Gazimov's Gazimov ceiling. But 40 or 20 man content is going to give you beautiful um, purples. It's, you know, your, your epics are going to come from 20. Um, your legendaries, your oranges are going to come from 40. And then, and you have and a then, chance. And then, if you are one of the lucky few and you have the chance, you get pink. And pink but I believe is awesome. Pink, oh. pink, pink is rainbow unicorns of awesomeness. Um, oh, however, yes. I believe it's a chance of a pink of the last boss, but in a I, format. They, they haven't exactly explained really that. Anyway. There, yeah. there was a comment on the AMA on it, so I may have to go dig it out. Uh, but I believe they've done it in such a way that it's a token that you hand in for the start object. Therefore, if it does drop for your group, um, it's not class specific. And you it is BOE. A group who gets it. it is BOE, and it can be is... sold. No, no, the token can't be sold. I'm, I'm really sure on this you one. Sure? Have to okay. go look. Are you sure? Yeah. Because I, think, I, I know I we were discussing we're the over, fact. I think, I think we're crossing over Possibly. the tokens for getting someone else attuned. Yep. And the what I believe is the token that allows someone to go and get hold of the artifact. There's one last um, question, by the way, I want to tackle, but then we are going to have to go, and that's Zex's question. With the advent of 40-man raids, what percentage of the raid needs to be awake to get it down? Have you, um, just out of curiosity, um, had a chance to actually check out five mans? I have yet to run a dungeon, a raid... Um, or anything, uh, even ship hands in some cases and adventures within Wildstar where you could have one member slacking. If you lost a member and you had a certain group composition, you didn't have enough interrupts to take down the interrupt armor. If you did not have people paying attention and one person gets a debuff that kills everyone because they didn't move, you wipe. If this game is gloriously unforgiving for people who slack who people who think they can just join and be carried this game is incredibly unforgiving of that if you want to kill a boss before your healer runs out of mana or whatever their particular resource is 
you need to pay attention. You need to get those interrupts off. You need to avoid the bad stuff because there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on. I'm speaking as a healer here. There is nothing more frustrating to me than people who don't recognize the fact that in this particular phase, everyone's gonna drop to 5% health. In the process, we have to move to avoid firewalls. In order to do that, I still have to keep healing everyone, yet some of my biggest heals require me to stand still. But I can't, because if I stand still during that point, everyone is going to die, I'm going to die, and we're not going to be able to take things down. It is unforgiving, and it does require everyone to be awake so it's not like the old-fashioned days of molten core where you could have 17 of your 40 men asleep not really paying any attention and still take down a boss it doesn't okay. work that way no i mean the uh, there was a comment made that back in the day zex made it 40 man raids you know what percentage need to actually be awake getting some numbers to saying 25 people could be awake and 15 people could be afk I don't agree with those numbers. Um, I've seen it happen the in odd certain occasion raids. and fights where it can happen, but as a generic, I mean, especially if I go back to 40 man raiding and I look at, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, nobody is going to tell me and have me believe that 15 people could be AFK in Naxxaramas. No, see, that's a different story altogether, but there were certain bosses where it was very much so. Given. Oh. And our druids Given, spent more time that's facing not, things. That's not the fault of 40-man raiding per no. se. That's the individual design of that encounter. I haven't seen I anything yet that causes me to think mm -hmm. 20 raiders will carry another 20. There could be 30 that are better and 10 that are still doing the minimum they need to do. Uh, we'll have to see how that actually pans out. Yeah. Um, Coleman said we missed one of his questions. I'm scanning, looking at high speed. Can I actually We're gonna see We're going to have it? to be very, very, very quick because I I'm do trying. need to cut this. Producer Josie steps up to the plate and brings Axe of Doom. Doom. Right. That's okay. I cast various things that interrupt Axe of Doom. <laughs> No, you but don't, because I, I, I have can't the... see your question. Here's the deal, guys. If you have a question you do want us to tackle, please keep in mind next week, Cosmetronic, we are not here. Cosmetronic next week is canceled. However, when we come back the week after, we have a heck of a lot of stuff that we can answer. Send us your questions. Voice at MMOBuff.tv. Get it to us because we can answer them. We can make them the highlight of a show. You know, just because Wildstar is being released at the end of this month, technically the start of next month, does not mean Cosmotronic is stopping. We will continue. We will continue. And we have many, many things that we can discuss. Everything from the actual accounts of, say, rating or down to... How do you theory craft out something? I mean, we want to help you guys have an enjoyable experience. We want to bring you knowledge. We want to bring you experience. And who knows who might show up? That's all I'm going to say. And once we get into the live game, then we'll start bringing our experiences from the game exactly. to the show. You'll be, you'll be able to poke fun at our lack of progression or whatever it is that's actually happening, but it's all going to be there to actually look at and poke fun at. So there'll be no secrets, and we're look. I'm I'm looking forward to the journey that is the start of the game. Yes. But on that note, guys, it's been great to have uh, so many of you here. We had quite a few here earlier. Spread the word. Let people know we're around. We're busy doing as much as we can on MMOBuff.tv. And the thing we need now more than anything is your guys' involvement, your health, yes. being here, letting people know we're alive. Yep. And uh, hey, the more you guys are here, the more it helps us get things done. Exactly. And on that note, I hate to say it, but we do need to close because some of us need to go take care of some certain businesses for the guilds. So on, on that particular note, I look forward to those of you who want to see me tomorrow. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as um, Marsh and I do crazy things in the top draw. And for the rest of you, yeah. And yes, our Data Mind show is going to be Thursdays at 1 p.m. Face Palms. And my heart goes out to all of you. I, I, I love the community. And you guys, I, I love watching the fact that some of you guys disagreed with each other on completely different ends of the spectrum, yet there was a debate and it was healthy and it was supportive. It was not trash talking and trolling. And that, you're gonna make me cry. Not gonna do it. I'll save it for Tuesday on the campfire when we talk communities and then I'll cry on that show. That'll be great. And on that note, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Say your bye-byes. Gaz them off with a curry. 
Unless you've Gasm of ceiling says goodbye. <laughs> Gasm I, of I hear ceiling. nom 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 coming from the ceiling. <laughs> nom nom nom. Yes. And as always, this is Mispa in the Mo Buff. Signing off. Tittle Pip. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for watching Cosmetronics, episode 25, Hardcore Wildstar. If you like what you've seen, please click like, share, and subscribe. If you want to watch our entire series from the beginning, bottom left in the gray. And of course, if you would like to watch our previous episode, click the bobbly heads above you. Dance, dance. Speak with you soon.